I'm John Brooks. Welcome to lesson number three. In my last talk, I showed you how to create a grid system as a basis on which to design. If it were possible, you would now have a layer of drawings on trace with your site survey on the bottom. And with over that, your site assessment, that is, what goes where. And then you would have created a grid system drawing. And at long last, you could now start making patterns which you turn into a garden plan on a new sheet. All the information you need to evolve this final plan should be within these three initial drawings. On the drawing on the screen, you can see that in this fourth layer of your build-up, you start to think about areas of, say, four squares or 16. These areas can become lawn, terrace, pool or vegetable plot. And they will all have some proportional relationship back to the house and to each other. You could ring the changes with circles within the squares or link one pattern type to another. And as long as you take your proportions from the grid for your pattern, you could move the pattern. Its proportions will still be the same. The grid, as I have already said, shouldn't become a straitjacket, although I have stuck to the grid in this particular example. I would describe such a design as being static. That is, it has no movement and the garden would probably focus on the blue central square was planting all round the boundary line to reinforce that intention. Try various patterns to encompass the functions you want of your space to get the hang of this technique, and you will find that you're having fun. Now, a well-designed garden is one in which the eye is directed either to a view or to a feature and which directs the path which friends and family take on leaving the house. In this London garden, steps direct the user over to the right, with a change of direction, up the garden at the top of the steps. On coming from the house, in the example on the screen, the central line of sight divides the garden into two areas, but creates a formal style of design. Such a plan is fine for a period style property, but looks heavy and out of date with many of today's modern homes. And dividing a long thin garden down the middle is a recipe for disaster, as it creates two even thinner spaces that are almost unusable. A well-designed modern garden is one in which you can control the direction which the eye takes and which then leads the user when leaving the house. So the plan evolves from the house in which you try to link the functions of the garden together. With the help of the grid, a modern design relies on the strength of the ground pattern to delineate its functions and or root round it. So a garden needs both a visual and practical physical direction of flow. But unlike the more formal historic style outlined which holds the central ground, the contemporary garden tends to have a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction of flow round its site. The pattern on the screen suggests an anti-clockwise direction of flow by creating more emphasis on one side of the house, perhaps a terrace in this case, you subliminally infer a direction of flow. 
A terrace so positioned to the right of the house gives greater emphasis to this side of the plan. And the visual, if not physical journey, commences from right to left, giving an anti-clockwise direction of flow. Using the exact same garden, you can reverse the flow by placing the terrace on the opposite side. This now suggests a clockwise direction of flow and allows the designer to encourage the homeowner to explore even the smallest of garden spaces.